Dear students, so welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations, lecture number uh, 21. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue our discussions on the X-ray diffractions. Uh, this is part number five. Uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, we will have a discussion on uh, simple preparations for uh, XRD. So let's uh, start uh, today's lecture, that is prepara uh, preparing a powder specimen. So an ideal powder sample should have uh, many crystallites uh, in random orientations. Uh, that is, uh, the distributions of orientations uh, should be uh, smooth and equally distributed uh, amongst all orientations. Uh, and at the crystallites, in a sample are very large, so there uh, will not be a smooth distribution of crystal orientation. So uh, you will not get a powder average diffraction uh, pattern. I mean, uh, whenever you're trying to do uh, the XRD of a particular sample, so you should have to make sure uh, that the crystallized size is not uh, very large. And there is a reason uh, for that, that why it shouldn't be uh, very large, because here we are saying that, uh, I mean, if we get a very large sample, so we won't be able to get a good uh, diffraction uh, pattern. So that's why it's always prepared uh, during an XRD uh, analysis that the crystallite uh, should be smaller than 10 micrometers in size to get a good powder uh, statistic. I mean, if we have a larger uh, sample, so we won't get a good diffraction, x diffractions. And the result uh, that you will obtain uh, from our analysis uh, will be misleading. I mean, will not be, uh, I mean, the proper uh, uh, characterization results uh, that we are expecting from our uh, X-ray analysis. So large crystallite size and non-random crystallite orientations uh, both lead to peak intensity variation. So that is the, 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 uh, that you can say the drawback of larger size or larger crystallites uh, sample. Uh, and uh, that we can say that uh, in non-random uh, crystallite orientations, uh, so we can get a peak intensity uh, variations uh, that should be not exactly according to our uh, requirement. So the Meyer powder diffractions will not agree with that expected from an ideal uh, powder. So if you have uh, such a situations uh, where you have a larger size crystal or your crystallized size is very large or you have something wrong with the uh, orientations of your samples and uh, you were expecting some peak uh, for uh, your sample and normally you you have the idea that what sort of the sample what sort of sample you have and what uh, what sort of peak you are expecting if you get some unexpected peak so you should uh, I mean you should refer or you should keep that quiet in your mind that is uh, if the crystallized size is very large or you have something wrong with the orientations uh, so uh, it would mean that uh, I mean there is something wrong with your crystallite size So that they, the, the, the diffraction peak that you obtain would not agree with the uh, With the one that you expected from uh, your powder sample and also the Meyer diffraction pattern will not agree with the reference pattern and the powder diffraction file uh, That we call uh, the PDF uh, database. So one uh, one mistake uh, can lead you to so many uh, problems uh, uh, for uh, your uh, XRD analysis. So you should be very careful about uh, that. Prefer, um, we talk about prefer orientations. Here we are mentioning about the problem. Uh, that is, uh, we say large crystallite size and non-random uh, crystallite orientation. So we are clear about uh, what is actually mean by the crystallite uh, size. And here we have uh, the specification for the size. But what about the orientation? So let's come talk about the prefer orientations. So if the crystallite uh, in the powder sample have a plate or needle-like shapes, so it can be very difficult to get them to adopt a random orientation. So what we have for that? So top loading, uh, where you press the powder into a holder, can cause problem with the preferred uh, orientations. Uh, and a sample such as metal sheets or wires, there is almost always preferred orientations uh, due to manufacturing process. So for a sample with the systematic orientations, 
uh, XRD can be used to quantify the textures and the uh, specimens. Important characteristic of sample for uh, X-ray uh, powder diffractions. So the first thing is uh, a plate, a plate sample for XRPD should have a smooth uh, plate surface. Uh, by I mean, uh, what actually mean by this? So it means that if the sample, uh, I mean, if we have a sample and if the uh, the surface is not smooth and flat, so X-ray absorptions may reduce the intensity of low angle of uh, heat. So this is the one drawback. Uh, and along with that, a parallel beam optics uh, can be used to analyze the sample uh, with odd shape or uh, rough surfaces. Uh, we can have uh, densely fake uh, sample uh, and we can also have randomly oriented grains or crystallites. Uh, grain size should be less than uh, 10 microns. I mean, these are the thing uh, that we, we should keep in mind. I mean, th these are the important characteristic of a sample for XRPD. Uh, that is, uh, one is about the flatness for the flat uh, sample, then uh, it should be densely baked. Uh, then uh, it should be randomly, uh, I mean, randomly oriented grain or crystallite size. And uh, uh, the grain size should be less than uh, 10 micron. And uh, it shouldn't, uh, uh, it should be infinitely, uh, I mean, uh, thick. So, uh, wearing, wearing a radiated area of the sample, so what, what will be the effect of wearing a radiated uh, area of the sample? I mean, uh, in sample world, uh, what it means, in sample world, it means that what will be uh, the effect if uh, we change uh, the size uh, of the area uh, that is being uh, uh, that has been exposed to uh, the radiation. So, in sample one, it means like that. And here you can see an example. That is, uh, we are uh, wearing the uh, the area uh, that's been exposed to the radiation. So the area of your sample uh, that is illuminated by the X-ray, uh, I mean uh, by the X-ray beam, varies as a function of what? As a function of incidence uh, angle of the X-ray, uh, divergence angle of the X-rays. Uh, so uh, what it means, I mean there are two factors uh, on which we say uh, the area of your sample uh, while being exposed to uh, the excess during XRD uh, technique. So it varies as a function of the two things. What are those two, two things? That is, uh, it's been varied uh, with respect to the incident angle of the X-ray and the divergence angle of the X-ray. So at low angles, uh, which you can see it here. Uh, the beam might be wider than uh, your sample. So here you can see that the beam is uh, wider at a low angle. And here you can see that at higher angles, uh, so the irradiated area, they are being small. And here you can see, uh, you, you can check for uh, your sample. So uh, we can have beam, uh, beam spell up. Uh, and beam spell up, so it's the, the condition that uh, you can see it here. Uh, and these particulars, uh, uh, I mean, and, and these, these particular shape, you can see uh, what actually we means uh, that what, what actually happens uh, with the, uh, by wearing the angle of the X-ray or uh, the incident angle of the X-ray or divergence angle of the uh, X-rays. And what we are mentioning that at low angles, the beams uh, might be wider uh, than your samples uh, that we call uh, beam uh, spell up. So you can analyze or you can check it here by uh, yourself. Another important thing is the constant volume assumptions. Uh, so what it mean? It means that in a polycrystalline uh, sample of infinite thickness, the change uh, in irradiated area uh, as the incident angles uh, varies uh, and compensated for the change and penetration uh, depth. So these two factors results uh, in a constraint, uh, sorry, in a constant uh, irradiated volume, uh, that is, uh, as area decreases, so depth increases and a wide uh, versa. I hope you, you get this point. That is, uh, here we are saying that if we have a crystalline sample and that crystalline uh, sample have infinite thickness, 
then the change and the irradiated area as the incident angles varies as compensated for the change and the penetration depth. So these two factors are result in a constant irradiated volume. So what it mean? It means that as the area decreases, so depth increases and vice versa. I mean, if we depth increases, so the area will increase. So these are the two factors we should keep in mind. So this assumption is important for many aspects of XR, uh, XRPD. Uh, so matching the intensity to those in the PDF uh, references database. And along with that, uh, the crystal uh, structures are uh, refinement and a quantitative phase analysis. I mean, uh, these, these have been especially important here. Uh, while uh, we are getting the analysis, are we trying to match our results uh, with, the, with that in the uh, PDF uh, reference uh, database? So this assumption is not necessarily valid for thin films or small quantities of sample on, uh, on a Z uh, edge. So ways to prepare powder samples, uh, uh, we have top leading uh, bulk powder into a well. I mean, uh, here we are discussing about the ways, uh, I mean, how many ways we have to prepare uh, a powder sample. So the first one is uh, top loading a bulk powder into a well. Uh, so uh, in this technique, uh, we deposit powder into a shallow well of a sample holder. I mean, this is the first and well-known technique in case we have a powder sample. So in this uh, technique uh, of sample preparations, uh, we deposit powder and a shallow well of a sample holders. So uh, normally we use a slightly rough flat surface to press down on the powders, uh, packing it into uh, the well. So uh, just like, I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, I mean, well-known uh, technique for a sample preparations and XRD that is uh, you simply uh, you put your powder and that uh, I mean uh, shallow well like structures uh, and uh, then you have to slice slightly press that uh, you, you have to make that into uh, a plate surface uh, and using a slightly rough surface uh, to pack the powders uh, can help minimize uh, prefer uh, orientation so that's uh, another thing you should keep in mind whenever you're trying to prepare your powder sample and a shallow well-like uh, structures. Uh, and along with that, maximizes the sample with the filler, uh, such as floor or glass powders, may also help minimize uh, the prefer uh, orientations. And powder may need to be mixed uh, with a binder to prevent it from falling out of the sample uh, holder. So that you should also keep in mind. Uh, or alternatively, the well of the sample holder can be coated with a thin layer of Vaseline. Uh, I mean, that is uh, to catch the powder. Or uh, I mean, so we, we should uh, we should have to make sure that uh, I mean the, the powder uh, during the analysis uh, it shouldn't be uh, wasted. So these are the precautions we should do for the sample to be uh, kept and uh, the sample holder until unless it's not been. Uh, properly analyzed uh, during the XRD technique. So dispersing a thin powder layer on a smooth surface. So for that, uh, a smooth surface such as uh, glass slides or a zero background holder uh, may be used to hold a thin layers of the powders. Uh, that is a glass will contribute in an amorphous uh, hum to the diffraction patterns. So the, the ZBH uh, avoid this problem by using an off-axis cut uh, using crystals. Uh, dispersing uh, the powder with the alcohol onto the sample holder and then allowing the alcohol to evaporate. So often provide a nice uh, even uh, coating of the powder that will adhere to the sample holder. Uh, powder may be gently uh, sprinkled onto the pieces of uh, double-sided tape or a thin layer of a line to adhere to the uh, sample holders. Uh, so this double-sided uh, tape will contribute to the uh, diffraction uh, pattern. I mean, uh, if you are using some stacking materials, so you have to make sure uh, that those uh, stacking materials should not be reported uh, in the form of peak and the uh, X-ray diffraction uh, reserves. So we, we are uh, mentioning some special precautions 
there what sort of the materials uh, you can uh, utilize as a stacking materials and at the same time we have to make sure uh, that those materials they either operate or uh, they should be uh, amorphous so that they should not be reported uh, in the XRD analysis. So these methods are necessary for mounting sample, uh, I mean for mounting small amount of the powders. Uh, along with that, these methods help uh, alleviate problem with the fripper orientations. And the constant volume assumption is not valid for this type of the sample. And so quantitative and uh, the fuel analysis will require extra work and may not be uh, possible. So that's all we have for sample preparations. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next lecture. That will be lecture number 22. Uh, and that will be on sources of error uh, in uh, XRD data. So stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.